Hello, and welcome to the GrainGenes database browser demo. My name is Sarah, and I'm one of the curators here at GrainGenes. Today, I'll be walking you through how to use the class browser to explore information in the database. Wheat stripe rust is one of the most destructive diseases of wheat worldwide. When stripe rust reaches fields, up to 40% yield loss is common. With susceptible cultivars and certain weather conditions, total crop loss can occur. The primary means of protection against stripe rust is the use of resistant wheat cultivars. Therefore, the identification and characterization of stripe rust resistance genes, both in wheat and closely related species, is crucial to wheat researchers, breeders, and farmers. We'll be following links between data types to try to learn more about known disease resistance genes. Let's begin. From the Grain Genes homepage, we can click the Browse Grain Genes Quick Link to get to the class browser. Listed below the search bar are the names and counts of all the data types that are held in the database. You can use the search bar to search through all of the data types, or you can limit your search to a particular class with a drop down menu. When I type stripe rust, two entries are brought up. One is a keyword from a publication, and another is a type of pathology. Using an asterisk as a wild card on either side of your phrase can search for all entries that have the term stripe rust somewhere in their name. We get a lot more matches with that search. Let's look at the pathology type to learn more about stripe rust. A pathology report page shows information about a particular disease, such as the causal organism's name and type. In this case, it's Puccinia striformis tritici, which is a fungus. It can affect wheat, barley, and rye. Other information shown includes evaluations that have been done on germplasm for resistance to this pathogen, symptoms of the disease, images of infected plants, and known resistance genes. Let's look at the first resistance gene listed, YR29, in wheat. We are then brought to a report page for the gene, which has some general information on the gene's role and references. Clicking Marker Report opens a new window, which expands to show both the gene info and the locus info. From here, we can see that YR29 is on chromosome 1B on the long arm. A marker has been identified for the gene, XWMC44. Clicking on the Wheat Composite 2004-1B map, we are shown a CMAP view of a composite map for chromosome 1B. Our locus, YR29, is highlighted. A few other stripe rust resistance genes are on this chromosome. Interestingly, YR29 is in the same position as a leaf rust resistance gene, LR46. We can look more into that later. On the locus report, YR29 was only listed on one map. With CMAP, however, we can compare maps to see if any markers near YR29 are also in other maps. I'm going to choose two maps for comparison. Scrolling down, you can choose to add maps on either the left or the right. We are then prompted to choose a map set and a specific map to draw. I'm going to choose a hexaploid wheat UG99 consensus map on the left. and the consensus SSR map on the right. Here we are shown how many features are shared by the two maps. Blue lines are drawn between shared features, which are also highlighted in red. Let's highlight the feature that was listed as a marker for YR29 on the Locus Report page, XWMC44, so we can see if it's in any of these maps. If we scroll down to Feature Options, there is a bar called Highlight Features. YR29 is already in the bar. If we type a comma, then XWMC44 in quotes, and press Redraw, the maps are shown with our marker highlighted in yellow. 
There can sometimes be variation in marker names. For example, XWMC44 can also be listed as just WMC44 or XWMC441B. If we type all three of these into the Highlight Features bar and press Redraw, we'll see that the marker actually exists on all three of these maps. So now we know more about the location of YR29 on the genetic map and the marker surrounding it. Let's get some more info on that significant marker, XWMC44. Going back to the Locus page for YR29, we can click WMC44 to go to the probe report for this marker. There are primers available to use this marker in marker-assisted selection, as well as PCR conditions, and information on the researchers that established these primers. The marker is a microsatellite, and a sequence of the probe is likewise available. Interestingly, WMC is also a marker for the LR46 locus that we viewed nearby to YR29 on the map. So this region of 1B contains both a stripe rust and a leaf rust resistance gene. The LR46 gene is tightly linked, or pleiotropic, to the stripe rust resistance gene YR29. Perula and Pavon76 possess these two resistance genes. The germplasm report for Perula states that it is part of the USDA's National Small Grains Collection. You can get more information about this line and how to obtain seed by following this link to the GRIN website. Back at the marker report for YR29, clicking on Show Nearby Loci will take you to the SQL interface, where a pre-crafted query will output a list of markers from the consensus map we looked at before that are within 10 map units of YR29. YR29 and LR46 are both at position 115. A slight alteration of the query, substituting 10 with 20, and we get a larger range of markers. XWMC44 is now listed and is at position 100, a distance of 15 centimorgans from LR46 and YR29. Because this is a consensus map, built by combining information from multiple maps, the map units are not definite. However, this still gives us a good idea of how close the marker is to its linked genes. If we want to read further about YR29, its markers, and its relationship with LR46, we can click on the reference pages. Here is a reference for a moss wheat web page for the two genes. That looks like it could be informative. If we click on it, we are brought to a report page for the reference. The external database link will take you to the site itself, where we can read even further. Thank you for joining me for this walkthrough tutorial. I hope it was informative. If you have any questions, would like to add data, or anything else, please let us know by pressing the yellow feedback button at the top right of every page and filling out this feedback form. Goodbye, and happy searching.